Hello and welcome to the Skylight Magazine vodcast. My name is Will Gator and here's what's coming up in the May episode. We find out about the latest happenings on the International Space Station. We'll have a look at the latest observations from the European Space Agency's Herschel Observatory. And I'll bring you up to date with some top sites to look out for in the night skies in May. Well, it's been a really busy month in the world of manned spaceflight, with the launch of a Soyuz spacecraft and the Space Shuttle Discovery to the International Space Station. On the 2nd of April, a Soyuz TMA-18 took off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, carrying with it a NASA astronaut and two Russian cosmonauts to the International Space Station. They arrived at the station two days later, joining three colleagues on board to complete the six-person strong Expedition 23 crew. Then, just a few days later, it was the turn of astronauts on the Space Shuttle Discovery to launch into space from Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After a smooth countdown, STS-131 leapt off the pad in the darkness before dawn on Monday the 5th of April. And in doing so, it began a 13-day mission to the International Space Station. On board the Space Shuttle with them was the Leonardo Multipurpose Logistics Module, a huge container full of several tons of science equipment and other space station supplies. Whilst on board the space station, the STS-131 astronauts are scheduled to carry out three spacewalks with the aim of replacing one of the space station's ammonia tanks, as well as carrying out other miscellaneous repairs. After Discovery's flight, there are only three more missions planned before NASA retires its shuttle fleet, with STS-133 set for a launch in mid-September. So, now's your chance to see the shuttles before they're gone for good. Now, in May last year, the European Space Agency launched their Herschel Space Telescope from Kourou in French Guiana. If you remember, Herschel is an infrared telescope with a huge primary mirror of 3.5 metres in diameter. Now, Herschel's primary mission is to study the formation and evolution of galaxies in the early universe, as well as studying the lives of stars. It's been doing this by peering through the dust and gas that often obscures other wavelengths, and this can be seen nowhere better than this new image from the telescope. This picture shows a section of the Rosette Nebula, an object 5,000 light years distant, which many amateur astrophotographers will know as a favourite target. Herschel's view reveals clouds of glowing gas and dust enveloping young protostars that can be seen as brighter knots in the colourful swirls of the nebula. These protostars are destined to eventually emerge as massive stars, roughly ten times the mass of our own Sun. The different colours in this image correspond to the different temperatures of dust in the nebula. So the glowing blue light we can see up here is coming from dust that's about minus 233 degrees Celsius whilst the redder light is from dust at an even chillier minus 263 degrees Celsius. It's a fascinating snapshot of stellar birth, and who knows, there may be a star just like our Sun being born somewhere in this view. Now before we wrap up the news, I just wanted to show you this new image from the Hubble Space Telescope. It's of the spiral galaxy Messier 66, which is in the constellation of Leo. Now the galaxy is about 100,000 light years across, and we can see it in remarkable detail in this image. Down here we can see these lovely red regions. They're regions of star formation, where hot young stars embedded within clouds of hydrogen gas are causing the clouds to glow this beautiful red colour. We can also see the huge sweeping spiral arms laced with dust in this lovely image. But the real reason I wanted to show you it was because if you have a small amateur telescope, you may be able to see this galaxy for yourself this month. You'll be able to spot it with a 6-inch telescope from dark skies. You can use the star chart in the magazine to search for the galaxy in the constellation of Leo. But unfortunately, it won't appear anything like this fantastic Hubble image. Through an amateur telescope, it appears as a little oval smudge, amazing nonetheless when you think about what you're looking at. Well, before we go, there's just time to look at the top events in May's night skies. First up is Comet C2009R1 McNaught, which could put on quite a nice show over May and the following months. At the start of May, the comet will be low down from the UK, close to the east-northeast horizon. You'll need a good amateur telescope of around 6 inches in diameter to pick it out sitting in the constellation of Pegasus. However, towards the end of the month, the comet may reach around magnitude 8, so you should be able to pick it out with just a pair of binoculars. It's possible that come the middle of June, this comet could reach naked eye visibility, so it's definitely a good one to keep an eye on. 
If you're in the UK on the 28th of May at around 10 past 2 a.m. BST, the moon will pass in front of, or occult, the star Sigma Scorpii in the constellation of Scorpius. Then, about an hour later, it will pop back into view close to the bottom right edge of the moon. A good pair of binoculars or a small telescope are all you need to see this interesting celestial dance. Lastly, here's our recommendation for any of you avid deep sky astronomers out there. Why not explore the amazing region around Coma Berenices this month? Binoculars show the lovely cluster Malot 111 in this region really well. And for any telescopic deep sky observers, there's a special deep sky tour of the finest sites in this region on page 58 and 59 of the May issue. Well, once again, that's it from me at the Skylight Magazine vodcast. If you're interested in some astronomical television, then the BBC Sky Night programme in May will be focusing on the ring planet Saturn, with all the latest updates from NASA's Cassini mission. But from me here, I'll wish you clear skies, and I'll see you again next month.